Hello and welcome back to the Xamarin Forms tutorial where we work on a time tracker app. I'm Patrick and this is the Let's Create series. Before we jump into today's video, I want to let you know about the new Let's Create series Patreon where you can show your support for the Let's Create series and enjoy some great benefits along the way. Be sure to head over to Patreon and check out Let's Create series. So as promised, we're going to fix something that we messed up on last time. Since statements are coming back in an ordered list, ordered by descending, we don't need to get the last or default because that will be the very first pay statement. We should get the first or default so that it's the most current pay statement. So let's change last or default to first or default. And now with first or default fixed, now we can start calculating the current pay period estimate on earnings. So we'll head over to the work service and we need a method call that will head to the server and retrieve some value for us. So we can just create a method that will return a task and we'll just return a list of all work items associated with this pay period. So just a list and we'll import the using statement. And this is a list of work items. And then we can call the method get work for this period async. And then this will retrieve a list of work items that are associated with this period. So let's head back over to the page model. So summary page model. After our statements logic, we can do the same thing, but for current period. So var current period items equals await. And this will be work service, which we need to import. Let's head up to our constructor and import the I work service. We can just call it work service. And then we want to cache that locally. So work service equals work service. And then we'll want to use a quick fix to generate that variable for us so that we do end up caching it locally. And then we can use that down here. We can say work service dot get work for this period async. And it will be responsible for going to the server, retrieving that list and then returning it from the server. So now that we have these current period items, which we need to create the implementation for this method, but for now we can just create the logic in the view model because the view model doesn't care about what the, the service implements. It only cares about what it retrieves. So we can still operate as if this dependency exists. So then we can iterate through these items. So we can say for each var item in current period items, and we can add it to the current total. So much like we did in the time clock page. So let's head over to the time clock page model. And we'll see that if we scroll down, we calculated today's earnings with the hourly rate times the work items running total or total hours. And so we can do the very, the same thing with our work items. So we can head back over to our summary page model and we could say current period earnings plus equals item dot total. And then we can multiply that by our hourly rate. And so I don't think we're bringing in hourly rate yet. So we could do that simply by going back to our time clock page and seeing where our hourly rate is set and it's being set from account service. So we need to import account service into the summary page model. And then we need to capture that hourly rate. So let, I'm going to go ahead and just copy this line. I'm going to head over to summary page model and I will paste the line at the top of our asynchronous method to initialize. And then I'm going to import that account service in the constructor. So I account service and we can call it anything we want, like account service. We'll import the using statement for accounts and then we'll cache it locally. Account service equals account service. And then I use an underscore. And then when we do a quick fix, we can just create that local variable. And then we also need a local variable for hourly rate. So now that we have this in here, Visual Studio can make an accurate guess of the data type for hourly rate. So when we quick fix, it'll import it, it'll create a double. And now we have hourly rate. And when we get into the current earnings, we can just times item dot total. And then we can say dot total hours. And we can multiply that by the hourly rate. So this will give us a running total of our current pay period. Before we check this, we need to create an implementation for our work, get work for this period async. So we can head over to the service for work items. We can go to our mock work service. We should get an error and we can use a quick fix to implement the interface. In our mock service, we can just return some basic work items that would apply to this current period. We will return task dot from result and we'll give it a new list and we'll just provide a couple work items in here. So I've added two work items. I made each work item start two days before now and then a day before now. 
and then on each of their end I added an hour. So that'll give us two hours in this current period and now we should be able to run the app and make sure it calculates the estimate for this pay period correctly. And if we head over to the summary page we should see that we have $20 as our current pay period estimate which is correct because we are basically logging two work items with an hour each and our hourly rate is $10 per hour and that gives us $20 as our current pay period estimate. So now that we have everything in this page hooked up and working properly, now we can finish up these, this custom view that we're going to make with the progress bar. So let's head over to the pay statement view and start creating a pretty cool custom compound view. With our pay statement view open, we can see that we have this hours progress view that currently doesn't do anything. It needs a renderer of its own. So let's go ahead and make a renderer for the hours progress view in iOS and Android projects. So we'll head over to the iOS project. We wanna make a new folder in here and we will call this folder renderers. Then we'll do the same thing in the Android project. So let's make a new folder in the Android project and let's name this one renderers as well. And now in our iOS project in the renderers folder, let's add a new class and we'll name this class hours progress view renderer. So with our iOS renderer created, we can extend from view renderer and then we'll import the using for the platform.ios from Xamarin Forms. And then we can go ahead and override the on element change. In the on element changed method, we, we need to hook into the method that is called when the element size changes so that we can create our progress view. So let's go ahead and check to make sure our new element is not null. So if e.newElement does not equal null. If it's not null, we'll go ahead and just hook into the size change event. So we'll just say plus equal. We can press tab and it will create the method for us. And then every time you register to an event, you want to unregister if appropriate. So we can say if e.oldElement does not equal null, then we can say e.oldElement.size changed will minus equals in that same method that was just created that'll deregister our method from the event. And now with size changed, we can get our current element, which we know the current element is going to be that hours progress view. So we'll say var view equals element as hours progress view. And we'll have to import the using again. And then this will give us the elements with which we need for the progress bar. So then we can define two paths. We want a path for the total bar width, and then we want a path to visually represent how full it is based on current progress. So we can define a new BZA path. So var background path equals new UI BZA path, and then we'll import the using for that, which uses UI kit. And now we can set the background path start point. So move to, and then we can just declare a start point. So new point, and this will just be zero for the X and Y will be half of the height. So we have our view. We could just say height divided by two. And then we want to add a line that goes the entire width. So we can say background path dot add line to, and this will just be the end point. So it'll be the entire width. So view dot width and the Y will be half the height again. So view dot height divided by two. So now that we have our background path, we want to give it a line width and we also want to give it a color. So let's say background path dot line width equals and we'll just give it something like five for now. And then we can give it a color by setting this path as a CA shape layer. So we could say var background layer equals new CA shape layer. We can import the using and then we could say background layer dot path equals background path dot cg path and then we can set this layer color we can say background layer dot stroke color equals ui color and we can just use something basic like gray for now and then cg color and then we want to add this layer to our sub layers so we could say layer dot add sub layer and we can add our background layer and now we want to make that foreground layer that is the width of the current progress. So if we want to get the current progress width, we can say var current progress width, and then this will equal the current progress. So we'll just say view.current, and that'll be minus the view.min in case the min is not zero. And then we can divide all of that by view.max minus view.min, and that'll put it into kind of a perspective in respect to where the min starts and all the way up to the max, and then the current should be somewhere in between. And so this will give us 
sort of a percentage of the fill. And so now that we have this percentage, we can draw our next line. So we'll say var foreground path equals new UI Bezier path. We can also move this one to the beginning. So this will be foreground path dot move to, and it will give it a new point again, and its X will still be zero. Half height, so view dot height divided by two, and then we will add a line. So foreground path dot add line two, and we'll give it a new point, and this will be not the full width, but the full width times the percentage of the current progress width, which will give us a percentage of that entire width. So we can say view dot width times current progress width, and that'll give us that percentage. And then we also want it to be half the height again for Y. And then we can do the same thing. We can create the var foreground layer, just like we did with background layer. So foreground layer equals new CA shape layer. We can set its path by saying foreground layer dot path equals foreground path dot CG path. We can also set that line width of the path. So we'll do that above setting the path to the layer. So we will say foreground path dot line width and we'll set it to five again. We'll set our foreground layer stroke color to something other than gray. So we can just use a blue will work. So we'll just do CG color. So we'll add that foreground layer to our sub layers as well. So we can say layer dot add sub layer and we will add the foreground layer. So now this will add our, our progress view for iOS but the problem is every time the size changes, it'll add a new layer every time. So two new layers every time. So instead of creating a new layer every time, instead what we should do is cache the layers locally. So we can, instead of saying var background, we can just use an underscore and same for foreground. And then we can go ahead and use a quick fix to create a local version of it. We'll do that for both. So then we wanna check to see if these are null. So if background layer does not equal null. We want to remove that layer from its super layer. So dot remove from super layer. And then we also want to do that for foreground. So if foreground layer does not equal null, let's go ahead and remove foreground layer from super layer as well. And then we can go through and initialize all these again. So we still have some errors because we don't have the underscores on the rest of these background layers. So let's go ahead and copy and paste. So the last thing we need to do before we use the renderer is export the renderer so Xamarin Forms will use it. So we can say assembly, export renderer, and then we'll provide two types. The first one will be of the hours progress view that we are rendering, so hours progress view. And the other one, the next one will be the hours progress view renderer to tell Xamarin Forms to use our renderer for this view. So we will say type of hours progress view renderer, we'll import the using, and now we should be able to test the app on iOS and we should see a progress view for our 10 hours work. So when we head over to the summary page on iOS, we'll see that we have a progress view now and it doesn't fill the width of the view, which is something we do want. And also we only have one hour worked. So it's there's a tiny blue section here that takes up 1% basically of our total progress view. So the first thing we should do is stretch this view out because the stack layout is just condensing to the to the width of its content. So let's go ahead and make this stack layout take up the rest of the view. So we'll head back over to our pay statement view and we'll make this stack layout take up the whole space. So we can do that by going into the attributes of our stack layout and just say that its horizontal options are fill and expand. And when we press save, it should reload and it should give us a progress view that is the full length of the view minus that 10, which is the $10 that they earned. And so now we might want our label, the pay range label, to have a horizontal options of center and expand. So horizontal options, center and expand. And then when we save, it should kind of center in the view. And so that's fine on iOS. We want our progress view to be thicker and maybe add some different colors. But for now, just to see our progress view working, that's fine. So we'll head over to the Android renderer. So let's stop our app and we'll go into Android renderers and we'll add a new class. And this class will be the same thing. So it'll be hours progress view renderer. This renderer will also extend from our view renderers, view renderer. And then we also need to notify Xamarin to use our renderer. So we could just above namespace say assembly, export renderer, provide the type of the hours progress view and provide the type of the renderer that we're using. So hours progress view renderer. And then we could import all the three usings. And now we'll get this kind of notification saying that this one is obsolete, this constructor, and we need to pass in a, the context. And that's simple enough. We can just say base context 
And then in the constructor, we can just say context, context. And then when we import, make sure you use android.content and that'll take care of that. And so inside this constructor, we wanna notify Android that we do want to draw this view. And so by default, view renderers have set will not draw to true. And so we wanna set will not draw to false so that it will use our overridden on draw method. So we can just say set will not draw to false. And now we can override this on draw method. So override on draw. And in this on draw method, we could use the canvas to draw the two lines, the background line and the foreground line. This time we don't need to cache those lines because while iOS reuses the layer and the sublayers, Android draws everything on the canvas from scratch every, every call to the on draw method. So in here, we will declare a paint, which we'll use for things like the line width and the line color. So var paint equals new paint. And then we can set its color, so paint.color equals, and we can use the Xamarin Forms color for gray, and then just say to Android. We'll have to import the using, and this will say using color equals Xamarin Forms color. And then we can set paint.stroke width, which will give us that line width that we're looking for, so stroke width equals, and then we can use our context dot two pixels and we can provide density independent pixels, which is super helpful because we don't really know the screen density on, on the phone. So this kind of gives us a, a shortcut. And so let's also use five like we did on iOS. And then we can go ahead and draw that line. So we can say canvas dot draw line. And this wants a start X and Y. So the start X will be zero. The start Y will be canvas dot height divided by two. And then the stop X will be the entire width, so canvas.width. And the stop Y will be that same half height of canvas, so canvas.height divided by two again. And then we wanna provide paint. So this will draw that line. After we draw that line, we can update paint. So we'll update the color and we'll give it a blue color now. So color.blue.toAndroid. Stroke width can stay the same and now we'll just draw another line. And this will be from zero canvas.height divided by two for y again. Now the width is going to be that same variable we used last time. So let's head over back to our iOS renderer and we can grab this current progress width, which we're gonna have an error when we bring it over because we didn't cache the view. So we'll have to cache the view as well. But we don't wanna cache the view on every on draw step. We'll do it right in on element changed. So let's override on element changed. And in here, we'll just grab a reference to our view. So we'll say view equals element as ours progress view. And then we can use a quick fix to generate that variable. And now we can use view.current minus view.min and view.max minus view.min. And I'm using underscores to denote that it is a class level private variable. And so now the width will be the canvas width. So canvas.width times and then that percentage. So that current progress width is a percent. And so that'll be the, the width there. And so that is stop X and then stop Y is still going to be canvas.height divided by two again. And then we need to provide a paint. So same paint, we just changed the color. And so now an error we get is that this canvas.width, which is an integer times the double will give us back a double. We just need to make sure this entire thing ends up being a float. So we can do that by casting the entire operation to a float, and now we should be good to test the app. And so heading over to the summary page on Android shows that we have that gray background, just like we did on iOS, and we also have that bit of blue, which is that 1% of the width of the view as the current progress, because it's one hour for a total of 80 hours maximum, and that turns out to just over 1%. And so now we have a working progress view on iOS and Android. And that's where we'll end today's video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. This is Patrick from the Let's Create series, and we'll see you next time.